organise a spare part that could be fitted in the event that it did fail. I'll go and get some information from it. Thank you. Uh, parish surgery and police matters. Well, the only thing we had, uh, Mr. Goodyear came in actually and uh, was talking about this um, problem in, in Station Road, in the road, the road issue, which he raised and showed me a photograph. He also raised the issue of um, cold calling and whether charities were exempt from the cold calling um, restrictions. And I pointed out to him that they are, if they're actually asking for money, basically, because it's, it's to do with funds. They are yeah. exempt. No, they're not. No, they're not. If, if they're calling to raise funds, which, let's face it, that's what charities will do, they won't do it for any other reason, um, then in fact they should be controlled in the same way as everybody else. <coughs> as far as I know, the only people that are not controlled is the Jehovah's Witnesses. Because they are not actually selling any products, they're just actually selling, well, a service. <laughs> yes, where you want to call it, actually. Um, so, um, so I just explained to him that, that, that that's how I understood it, and, and that's what Pete Wills told me when I last asked the question. So, so that one seems no. to have been dealt with. <coughs> <coughs> okay. Any police officers like No, the police weren't here. The police weren't here. Yeah. 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 No. Um, I don't think there are any other issues that are on that. Report from the club. No, 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 there's nothing that, uh, that, that uh, is not coming up already and later in the um, um, so I think you all had an opportunity to. Um, oh, when do you want to do that under, under the finance the CPD? Uh, yes, uh, that's, that's a second item. So, or is it? Oh, yeah. No, we need to do that now. Actually. Yes. Um, under under um, reports. Are we? Um, no, we did we do the clerk's report, I suppose, really. Um, one of the things that uh, I guess all of us, <coughs> and, and, you know, I'll include, I won't include all of us, is that sometimes we perhaps lose sight of what our standing orders and code of conduct are because we're not used to looking at them regularly. So, Richard and I just, just had a chat about it, and basically we, we thought maybe taking in perhaps the odd standing order or the odd code of conduct at each meeting and just elaborating a bit so we're all a little bit up to speed on it will probably be useful for everybody. Um, you know, it might be it might be declarations of interest, it might be something completely different to that. But it, it's just a it's just a refresher for everybody so that we're all clear about and, and it's a help to me as well because it means that I can verbalise as well and get feedback on, on, on that. And I think if you're happy with that and happy to do that, then I'm happy to, to set that up on, on a monthly basis for you somewhere. It's particularly if there are issues that mm. have changed and we are not aware of that change. And as professional professional individuals, uh, CPD is an important thing, continual pro professional development. And it doesn't hurt anybody to um, make sure that we're doing things correctly mm. and in the manner that we, we would, I hope, Want to do and continue to do for the future. John, were you wanting to make a point or were you just waving no, no, it? No, you're, you're, you're wafting. Waving my glass. Oh, sorry about that. That's fine. I'll just stop waving. No, no, you can continue no, to waft. Do I do. Feel, feel free to waft. I mean, clearly, some, some things on our code of conduct are, are more important and more serious than other matters. You know, there's a, they're not all, they don't all have the same weight. So, but they're you know, all important to the person that's got the problem. Yes, yeah, yeah, no. You're yeah. Right. yeah. But, you yeah. Know, and, and it, it may be a problem that we're not aware of, and we just need to just make sure she's Sorry? Yeah. 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 Fine. So, price bonus received. So there's just two items. Um, we had a letter from Sedgemore. We did have this some years, a couple of years ago now, where they're offering their legal service, legal advice, should we need legal advice for any reason. Um, and it's to do the sort of things they're talking about here are employment law, civil litigation, debt recovery, criminal litigation, those kind of things. I mean, they're unlikely that we should probably need them, but they're offering their service at <coughs> £100 per hour plus VAT, which apparently is significantly less than a local solicitor would, would, would charge us mm -hmm. for the same service. <coughs> so they're just asking us, and they've just sent it, resent it, just to keep us keep it in mind for the future. Do we get a free go? Hmm. A free go. 
But we do have some legal support through SALC as well. Yeah, we have some legal support through SALC. <laughs> uh, slightly different <coughs> in the nature, I would suggest. It's more, the SALC legal advice is more about constitutional matters of running, running <coughs> a council in terms of meetings and stuff of that nature, whereas what Sergeant was saying is, could be a, a legal issue that comes up even from a result of the public, you know, a public matter, which we need to seek legal advice on. So it, it's a slightly different. Uh, but Bobby, do you want to yeah, it was just this, this came up when they had the all parish council meeting that mm -hmm. took place in September. Um, one of the things particularly that came up was the Barrow incursion that they had with gypsies that mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. took residence on their mm -hmm. public mm -hmm. playing field. Mm -hmm. And then the process that you have to go through in order to, to move people on is Byzantine, to be quite honest. And therefore, having a, an involvement of, of Sedgemoor, mm -hmm. they went through Sedgemoor and helped them get through that situation. So you know, that was one of the reasons that it could sort of suddenly crop up. Mm -hmm. But I'll put it on the file, and, and obviously if we have any recourse to that, then we've, we've got it available to us, should we wish to use it. I mean, it may well be that, you know, we, we put it to tender like everything else and say, you know, is there a local solicitor? But, you know, it's, it's, it's an option for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, finance. Uh, finance. Um, the statutory payments, these are the payments that we agreed back in April, are £1,408, that's salary tax, GB Sports and JP Mayo. Um, that's a standard, there's no changes to those payments. Um, and then, the other, now the, the thing is, on the Chairman's Allowance, I've got down here Chairman's Allowance, I think Richard wants to say something about, about that, because we, we put it in our budget every year for council's expenses. I think we normally put in eighty pounds and of that fifty pounds is um, this has traditionally been given to, to the chairman for his uh, property expenses. In my opinion I, I, I was I said to Owen I can't see the point. Um, I'm I'm happy not to have it and if I incur expenses I will just claim them as and when <coughs> if if councils are fair and, and that fifty pounds can go off into something else. As far as I'm concerned, uh, um, Mr. Chairman, last year I, in fact, waived my allowance uh, because that money went to um, the buying ground. plants for the entrance into the village. So I think that um, would be a good use to put it on, put it towards providing some more plants next year for that garden, if that's acceptable to everyone. Because we will need to yeah. Yeah. What I would say is I, I don't have a problem if, if, the, if the current chairman wishes to allocate that money to something else, that's fine. The reason it was brought in is that it was to protect people from feeling they didn't want to become chairman because they would have the cost of telephone calls and postage and all the stuff that goes with that. And there were a couple of people who took on the, the job who, <coughs> to be honest, needed to have that help financially and it was felt by doing that then you don't rule anybody out. Yeah. If if a particular chairman, as I say, makes the choice that Colin did last time or you're doing this time, then that's fine. But I think it should it should remain there so at least it's not a discouragement for someone to become a, a chairman because they think they'll have all that hassle to to deal with. And and, and you do get knock off things with in terms of expenses, in terms of, of mail and, and particularly phone calls. Um, can often be, be something that doesn't really rack up. Yeah, um, I mean, we've got it down as, in the budget as council's expenses. We haven't got it down as chairman's allowance. It's, it's literally down as £80 pounds, uh, council's expenses, so it can re remain as council's expenses for, for anything that we want, to, want it to be used for, I guess. Um, from my point of view, phone calls are part, I get free, you know, for an hour it's free, so any time of the day. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, some people turn them out for an hour. Or you just ring them back. Okay. You stop after an hour and then ring them again and then... Mm. Yeah, those are a bit low yeah. those. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, Bob and Richard are going to uh, leave, leave... Yes, we've got... <coughs> if I, if I, just, <coughs> I don't think we should detain you too, long, I don't think. It's cold in the room. I've had to... A couple of weeks ago, Western Power wanted to get access to the green, and, and in order to 
do so, they put a new padlock on there. Bob had to get some, some keys cut, um, which obviously Western Power have given us recompense mm -hmm. for. So I've simply got a check here to Bob to recompense him for getting the keys mm -hmm. cut. So anyway, £15. How many keys? Uh, two keys. Two keys? Who holds the keys? Uh, well, I think I've, I've got one here. I mean, I, I don't know who's got the other one. We need to check. I think Mac Hayes has got one, I think. One of them. Oh, Jason's got one, yes, definitely. Um, We'll check with Bob when, when he comes back in. Who's, who's so got I'm, I'm not sure who gave them. Probably got four keys. I was, yeah, I've got no problem as long as they're not buying keys for the parish hall. No, 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 Okay. <coughs> so, you know, I don't know why, but there we are. Yeah. The, the, yeah. 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 the only other item is um, Sally Wingate. And actually, I've, I've actually got a check here written for £20, but it's only £17.50, so I should need to reissue that check. Uh, unless we get the British Unless you want to, unless you're happy to give them 20 so, yes, yes. Okay. Um, okay. So that's 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 all the payments actually. Um, we have, haven't had a resolution for the payments in general. We had, yeah. Okay. So Peter. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, grant allocations. Now, historically, we've we've always allocated two hundred and fifty pounds to school. Um, Section thirty seven grants we put in the budget five hundred pounds. So 250 pounds and other grants 500, so there's a thousand in total. We've only had one application for a grant from CAB Sedgemore, as they normally do. That's the only application we've got in front of us at the moment for a grant. So the question is, do you really whether you wish to, 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 to grant the school in the usual way of 250 pounds, or whether you want it done on a specific project, which is what we have been doing in the last few years, asking whether there any specific reasons. Um, Books one year, I think. I think it was some other equipment mm -hmm. the second year. Um, has it always been 250? For quite a few years it has actually, yes. So therefore, should we not consider perhaps increasing it? I thought no, it moved no. up. No. It moved up a couple of years ago. No. We used to give them um, an allocation because we use their rooms. Yeah. Uh, we don't use their rooms now. Yeah, realised. Um, um, so that was to go towards them for appreciation for their help. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, could I propose that we grant the school £250 and that the £250 is either to be used towards sports equipment or music? Sports equipment. Okay, all those in favour? Yeah. And I'll write to Chris Ball with an email telling him that and he can come back to us and give us that information. CAB Citizens, Citizens Advice Bureau. <clears throat> yeah. I didn't know when I was looking at something the other day that they act as the agents for the training standards for Somerset and Devon. If you want to get through to training standards, you go through CAB, mm. which I find very strange. Mm. Yeah. Because they've merged the two departments in Somerset and Devon mm -hmm. now. And it just strikes me, why should we be providing a grant to a Citizens Advice Bureau, which is obviously getting funded through the county authorities anyway? The way they sell it to us normally is they write a letter to us saying that there's, I think on this occasion, 57 people in the village have used their services mm -hmm. over the past 12 months. Because what they do is... Colin and John probably knows better than me, but they keep a record of where all their contacts come from. So therefore they know that so many have come from Brent Knoll during that period. Mm -hmm. And that, their argument is that that's what they're asking a grant for, is they've helped the supporting people in, in, in Brent Knoll. Yes. No, that's, that's their they have asked um, this year. Well, they have asked, yes. They, they have. have. They have. Yes. No, that's it. Yeah. I mean, I, I was just wondering, where does CAB get their funds from, period, apart from... District Council. District, District Council. Well, yeah, they do get an element from, from the councils, but in generally the, what they get from the councils is to do specific tasks for them, so it's not general funding. So certainly they are, they're never 
over and down with, with funds, and I'd be, I'd be happy to propose that we pay, pay them £100. Mm. I'd just like to second that. Yeah, all those in favour? Yeah. Thank you. Come on. Um, the, the next item is the budget, preset budget for 2017-18. Um, <clears throat> they're wanting information a bit earlier this year, so it would be ideal if we could wrap it up at the December meeting, but I thought it would be a good idea to have a, a preliminary on, on this meeting. Um, <clears throat> what I have done, I'll put it, I'll put it up on the screen actually, and then so you can see it. Um, I'll come to the Milky Way for them. Yes. Three, three categories. Current budget, which is where we set last year, what we've actually spent up to date in the various categories, what I forecast in the blue, which is up to the end of March, and what I do is I simply take the expenditure that I know we have, for example, um, all the major key, you know, Jason Mayo's salaries, uh, GB Sports, etc., which I can easily forecast. Adding to that any particular one off, for example, we've got the Hills to Levels project. Uh, which will come out of this one, we've got the painting of the play equipment. So those are the things I've been able to build in as the forecast. Um, and, and then a proposal on the right hand side. Now that's just, that's just me sort of stabbing the dart as a starting point. That's not definitive. That's for you to decide, not me. And so I've just simply put there, you know, <clears throat> just say for example insurance, I put £800, £792, pounds. won't go up very much. Might have a couple of pounds, but won't go up very much. <coughs> <coughs> expenses, uh, subscriptions don't normally change a great deal. This first category, which is the admin, doesn't change very much uh, because it's things like room hire fees, the class maturity, insurance, audit fees, and subscriptions don't really fundamentally change from one year to the next. They might go up just a, a little bit. The, the, the really big changes come on the on the lower, the lower group, which is the village, co village costs. And you'll see there we have an initial budget of 17,832. 17, so far we've spent 25,000, and I'm forecasting that we shall end up at the end of the year at 30,000, which is about an increase of 13,000. Largely that's been due to the, the cost here, general maintenance of the mucker. That's the thing that really changed the figures this year primarily. And there were some other things as well. For example, we had the seesaw which we did get a small contribution towards, but we still actually made a commitment to it. Because on the other side of the coin, we had the Hanstone Energy Grant coming for £5,000. So you've got to take that into account as well. So if you deducted the £5,000 off of that, you know, the, the difference is only about 8000 at the end of the day. So um, that's where we are. And really what, what we want you to do, I guess, is to, if there's any areas particularly you think we want to be spending more on next year or less on or whatever, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chairman, um, uh, can you satisfy um, us on that you've increased your spinal um, yes. point, yes. points on salaries, yes. so yeah. you're, you're keeping yes. yourself That's right. just, just, in just a little bit ahead of the game. It's, right. it's, okay. it's about three quarters of one percent actually, and that's how that's how it's normally okay. been going up. Can, yeah, can, yeah. can we consider uh, splitting out of general mm -hmm. maintenance? Okay. any play equipment because I think you know, uh, if we had a member of the mm. public came in and say what's all this you know most of our money is going on general maintenance mm -hmm. uh, which, which, is, is, which, which is which is a bit anomalous whereas you know ten thousand actually was on play equipment which we could perhaps put in as play inspection so and play, equipment. play inspection and play equipment and yes. then we can transfer the twelve thousand pound expenditure from that budget to mm -hmm. Yeah. to the planning special budget, which will probably balance it better. Yeah. And then the community activity, of course, was, the reason why that's quite high is we put the seesaw in there. Now, you could argue, what's the point in the seesaw and the mud? The seesaw should be there <coughs> also into, into planning inspection as well. Yeah. Cycle racks went into community activity, because that was seen yes, as a community yeah. project. So, um, yes, I can change that around very Because I think general maintenance really is things like Toilet block. Yeah. Jason, Jason's. Yeah. Uh, of, no. of, of, of all things. Jason. Okay. Well, the, if toilet block is separately. If we're all happy, <clears> I think that, that um, just helps to clarify it for yeah. Yeah. members. Yeah. And there's a thousand pounds in there for, for grants, uh, which I've, I've estimated forecast year end. 
doesn't look as well maintenance actually, we, we should be underspending here actually by the looks of it. Um, so overall, if you look at the, uh, the overall total there, the you know, budget is 32,000, to date we're 33, forecast we're 44, and then we'll be back to 28 for next year because, because we won't have the, the big mother expenditure. Yeah. Um, unless you've got some expenditure you want to add, add to the next year's figure. Is there anything we can think of? Yes, Colin. Have you uh, included our contribution in there to the hills to that? Yeah, or yes. are you just going to. Where, where it's included that? in the forecast and the 19,994. 19, 19, That's in the general maintenance. The 19,994. It's within you. that figure. Okay, thank As you. indeed the play equipment um, painting okay. is also. Thank you. <coughs> I, in the past, we agreed that um, if there was a survey on the junction, at the top of the road, uh, we would make a donation to uh, highway towards highways for the benefit of that. Should we set something aside for that now, just in case? That's not there. Mm. I don't think, that, to be honest, that we should um, subsidise it. Very but, popular uh, um, so it's something that, that we we've getting to if the, voted on in the past. Point, yeah. Mr Chairman, we do carry reserves, um, and so surely if, uh, and we've got, we've got £5,000 that we're holding from Hadstone mm -hmm. Energy mm -hmm. anyway, which mm -hmm. we still haven't spent, we're holding reserves, so if we do have to spend, decide to do anything on that junction, then the money can, can come from there. Um, Hope, well, I mean, let's be honest, I mean, the, the oh, proposal that could be going forward has already had a survey done recognising whether Somerset Highways will accept the validity of that survey or not, we don't know. And it's only a question then of whether um, Somerset themselves would have to do an alternative survey. Mm. And at that time, they would, would they then approach us? And if they don't approach us, why should we offer? No, that yeah. really no, I wasn't saying to offer, but um, if we get a request for it, yeah. uh, but as Colin said, we've got reserves. Yeah. But is there, is there a likelihood that they, that would actually happen? <coughs> and I would want If I could, on that one, probably not in the sense that we were putting the money out last time to try and encourage the county yes, to do something. Right. Yeah, exactly. Now we've got somebody else doing it, then they should be. Sorting yeah. that. So yeah. I think yeah. probably we're going to be okay yeah. on, on the previous page, because that's one yeah. 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 we about £2,000 that's in there at the moment, <coughs> which is in effect the cost of the maintenance and the, the running costs. Yeah. We did talk last year about whether we needed to do any maintenance in terms of things like the floor was mentioned that it was done with the wear or redecoration. Should we have something in that public conveniences just to allow us to do that maintenance next year? Because it's been a few years since it was done. Yeah. It might be worth having it refreshed. Mm -hmm. Is it worth putting another thousand on top of the on that? Go back to the, what we had this year. Mm -hmm. So you're suggesting another thousand pounds there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because did we ever hear back from anyone about risk assessments? Because we raised with Central, I thought, yes. asking them whether we needed one, and we yes. was going to. Yeah. Commission them, I thought to do it, but yeah. I don't know whether we've ever heard back. Never heard back, could you? No, no. Could you, could you, yeah, into those, right. I think we ought to. Yeah. Mm. If we put a, a, a thousand pounds in, uh, Owen, does that automatically flow through to Should do. the precept of yeah. Yeah. making it 31? Yeah. So I mean, what, would our, what would our yeah. increase be? It goes up to 32, actually, then if you do yeah. that. Um, you, the, if we just start on the beginning of this, obviously, we want to work it out, basically, is we put the opening cash reserves in there. That's where we start at the beginning of the financial year. I then estimate what I think will be our income yeah. for that period. Now, it's quite easy to assess that. The only bit that's a bit difficult sometimes is the VAT reclaim, because there's a big chunk, £2,000 from the mother. I think they've probably underestimated slightly what our, what our VAT reclaim will probably be a bit higher than that. So I'm saying that our income forecast for the total year is 37000 uh, 716, um, and then the forecast expenditure, which I've taken from the previous page, uh, salaries and tax, administration, village expenditure, flood allocation, grants, that's, that's, that's all where I, I forecasted it to, to end up at the end of March. Um, 
And then we come to this bit here, which is reserved. And this is a bit where there is some opportunity to change if you feel we need to. We've got 8,876 in our specific reserves. These are reserves that we can't really touch for anything else. It's Hasman Energy, Plants Maturity, and Election Fund. All that totals 8,876. 8, so I've got down there recommending reserves to, of six months' expenditure, but excluding specific reserves. Okay? So that, that 14,000 there excludes the specific re reserves that we already had. Yeah. In terms of that 8876, you're saying that includes 5,000 for Hadstone? Yes, the Bay Hadstone has Hadstone. We talked about the possibility of potentially some of the Hills Levels funding yeah. having come from we, we Hadstone. Use, yeah. yeah, we could use that if we wanted to. Yes, you did that. That, yeah, would, reduce. Reduce. that would reduce that by two, say two grand. Yeah. So that would be six, six, eight, seven, six. Yeah. And we have the potential of another two grand anyway. From, from, next, from next year, probably. Mm. Whenever they get the planning application. Yeah. So, in, in other words, then the, the precept would more or less stay the way mm -hmm. it is rather than inflate it because yeah. it would be even, it would be show a greater increase, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can change this, this figure here could be changed six months, nine months. It, really, um, if you obviously increase that to nine months reserves, nine months expenditure for reserves, then your precept will obviously go up. Mm -hmm. because you're holding more money back. Um, so it's a question really of whether you want to hold more reserves or whether you're happy with the reserves that we have. Hello. I am taking a Bob's interest in the toilet block in particular. I mean, <coughs> if, we've got, if we've got Hills to Level already budgeted in there, um, we could always go to that fund for any toilet increases instead of putting it in, in the budget at £1,000, we could just take it from there, and therefore our precept would remain as it is, or slightly increased. Mm. Yeah. But I, you know, I, it, it's just repositioning the money, isn't it? Yeah. To come we out don't have to sort of decide on this yeah. tonight, yeah. Yeah. we done yeah. in December, but, but the, the, question, the question we, we asked, or tried to ask also this afternoon, that we obviously don't know the answer to, uh, and other people, around the table weren't at our meeting this afternoon. Has anybody on any ideas on any other major expenditures that are likely to happen in the next uh, financial year? And, you know, who's got a who's got a glass ball that works? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's no obvious equipment on the green that we need to replace. Well there are improvements on the green we'd like to make, I'm sure. Um, well we're gonna we're gonna have painting and maintenance and that sort of thing which we've already allowed for but actual replacement of the kit per se um, and is there any other parts of the village that warrant some expenditure I'm not, not, I'm not aware I mean this 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 figure here this I mean that can come out of the allocation that can't it it doesn't really need to be there now is it because it's not been it's been blank for two years now mm -hmm. Whether that needs to be a subheading now, I don't know. It probably doesn't, actually. No. There's um, nothing in there. Um, it was when we, were, when we were buying the equipment, you know, three years ago or whatever, it was an important element, but it's not anymore. So, um, whether that needs to come out. Um, but I'll, 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 you know, I'll look at it again and rework it a bit in terms of, you know, the categories and so forth before next okay. month. And then obviously we can make a decision then in December whether we want to set the precept at 30,000, 31,000, 32,000, or whatever. Okay. Um, but, yes, Colin? Um, I mean, just to go back, the, yeah. the cost of the mugger that's yeah. in actual, yes. that includes VAT, does it? That does include VAT, yes. But that's the net cost that we, that's the, yes, the net cost that we paid to, to suffer. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. But, uh, well, we say we get it back on the on the income side. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm going to stay here and start keeping. It's all just musical chairs. Well, oh, just one other thing on finance. Um, I have actually applied for the adoption of the telephone box, so we should get some information about that very soon. Uh, we should get a formal notification from BT that we now own it. Ooh. And then it's up to us then to decide what we want to do with it and okay. what the planning application. Can we make an agenda item for next time, please? 
on what we can do with the telephone box. A light comment only. Chairman, can I just ask Owen one question on, on that? Yeah. When, again, this parish council meeting the other night, one of the parishes was saying they've been offered, I think you mentioned at the last meeting, that they would tell us what colour red to use. Mm -hmm. One of the parishes seems to be saying they'd actually been offered that they would supply paint for doing it. Yeah, so, yeah. So if, if, I'm sure if, we if, Yeah, so again, that's something would. we want to take up. Yeah, yeah. Painted party. Is it the same colour as post boxes? Uh, I'm told it's special paint. It's as far as it's very quick drying. Mm -hmm. So that when people put letters into newly painted letter boxes, mm -hmm. you don't get red mail. What, red letters? Red letters. <laughs> but it, I think, um, I guess it's important to have the telephone box in the right colour, I guess. For it to look all shaded. Yeah. Yeah. It was great, but no. Okay. Anything else on finance? Nothing else on finance, no. Thank you. Right, matters for consideration. Uh, Crooked Lane proposals, grants and payments, updates. Is that you, Colin? Um, well, well I think uh, Owen <laughs> circulated um, <laughs> everyone with um, um, right. a spreadsheet of um, yes. the finances, and we received the first uh, part from Royal Bath and West. They have given us 50%, yeah. and Axe have paid their money uh, to me. Or to us, sorry. Um, so, um, yeah, holding calls. Yeah. Yeah. And I've had a, a meeting with Matthew Wall and um, Gary Pope and um, uh, Clive uh, Kidner um, last last week when we walked the job. And um, uh, 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 Matthew is in fact picking up a few bits of extras in terms of tree cutting that's required and removing of gates and then the installation. So um, Matthew's been quite good there. Um, and I'm just waiting for a start date. Mm -hmm. They recognise that the weather conditions are good at the moment, so... Do you, you see it before yeah. Christmas? Or? I hope so. Good. Yeah. Um, so Mr Pope is at the moment here in the caravan park in the Is he? Yeah. Okay. Affordable housing provision, any further developments? I don't think there's anything... <laughs> Only Esther and Duncan have agreed to visit us in December and update us on the survey uh, responses. Would it be useful to have asked them to send a summary before the meeting so that we're all aware of the outcomes and have a, yeah. a, a horror or not, as the yeah. case may be? Yeah. Um, uh, bus provision in Brent Knoll, any replies? No replies Bob has a, an update from RMP. Yes, he. he ran up just to say that he has been in touch with Crossville and um, there's no definite news from them yet but he is awaiting a meeting that he's having with the MD to have further discussions about it. Thank you. Jubilee Stone Engraving Associated Work Updates Progress Report. John. Yeah, I went up to uh, I went up to Wells uh, Cathedral uh, into their workshops and it's progressing. Thank you. Uh, well, um, Millennium Oak plaque. This is something Bob raised a month or two ago. Basically, what it was was there was an, an oak tree that was planted to mark the, the Millennium, um, which is in Francis James's field. When they renewed the fence that was replaced along the front, unfortunately, the plaque that was on there, which told everyone what it was and when it happened, disappeared and it, it vanished. So, was was going to. I, I, didn't have the wording, I had a word with, with Peter and also um, Morris Jackson, who was chairman at the time, and he, mm -hmm. he forwarded back to me the wording that was on the original plaque, mm -hmm. um, which basically said, this English oak, and then the, the Latin Good, word, right. was, thank you, was kindly donated by Mrs. Sue Boss to celebrate the millennium. It was planted by Messrs. Morris Jackson and Peter Osborne, chairman and vice chairman of Brethnell Parish Council. Um, and then was going to suggest that we had on there by kind permission of Miss Frances James, because obviously it's on her, mm -hmm. her land, mm -hmm. but was going to ask the permission of the council if we could get a replacement plaque done so we can actually get it back mm -hmm. into where it was. Yeah. It didn't say that uh, uh, the plaque made, but uh, it's near enough. I mean, it said the chairman and vice chairman. I got that whole Morris Halford tree. I would propose that we. Uh, I would propose that we. Uh, 
um, replace the plan. So who would do that? Who should we get, would you say, to, 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 to do that? Mm -hmm. Does it need to be in certain colours? Or I mean, the last one was just a white plan with black letter. I think quite a good place is actually if you're, oh dear, going up the uh, A38, um, Premier oh, Trophy is on the left, they do Christmas trees and things like that, but they do, they do engraving. I've had some stuff done by them before. So I think they probably could do it. But as a principal, can we agree that we're going to do <coughs> all those in favour? Yes. <coughs> there is going to be a problem. What's up here? Well, the fence that came off of the square had a fence that now there was half round. And it was a flat plate that fitted on the flat on the flat of the fence. Right. So you have to decide on something different because it won't fit on the... Is it full round now as opposed to half? Sorry? Is it full round or half round? Half, half round. round. It's right. the back. Why don't you go on the flat? It's a flat face. So you can do it if you have it extended and then, yeah, like screw it from the back on a blank piece that's yeah. attached to a piece. So we're in principle saying yes, okay, we're going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. What, do we want to move it forward on that? Shall we get a quote maybe and bring it back to the next meeting as well? Yes, please, we're going to take it forward. Oh, sure, do you want me to be the Premier Trophy? <coughs> well, I, they, they do that sort of thing. Yeah, I don't think you could do that though. Yeah, I don't know. Perhaps between, have we got, do we need to have the same wording or? Oh, I've got the wording written down here. Okay, so that's fine. Wessex Water Infrastructure Project, I think that's been and done. Um, site visit, John, really? site visit. Excellent. You've been looking into it? Yeah, You've been really. looking at holes. Can we send a, a, a thank you? Just a thank you. Anybody else want to go? I think there is opportunity. Yes, there is an opportunity. We can get them feet on the outside. Would I mean be able to maybe organise that? Yeah, sure. Does anybody else want to go? Is it better, Bob? Did you have to wear any safety equipment? They bring it, they supply it. Good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you have to wear their hats and jackets. You want to wear it from my wear his, yes. Okay, that's fine. So if you send them over now, yeah, please. Yeah, that's right. Solar farm, whip lane, vehicular access. I'm not sure why. I think Malcolm, Malcolm reads this the last meeting. Yes, I've spoken to uh, one of the persons who has property off of that um, Lane from Wick Lane into that uh, field where the solar farm is going to. Is this be. The, is this the one that's going to be, or the yeah. one that's there already? One that's going to be. Thank you. Yeah. And um, he was told by contractors that um, regarding the delivery of the solar panels to the site, they were considering taking an Arctic or low loader with the panels on down to the foot of that lane into the site and offloading onto a smaller vehicle. Well, if that was the case, um, that lane or wick lane would be blocked for considerable amounts of time. And also, any vehicle of any size going down wick lane wouldn't be able to turn. It would have to go right down to the other end of Wick Lane before it could uh, turn if it needed to turn. So um, that creates a problem um, for people that live down there. And the contractor also said he was surprised at the amount of traffic that actually uses Wick Lane. Um, lots of traffic use it to cut through to. Um, uh, Brain and Lintrum and uh, vice versa and it could uh, amount to a considerable um, problem. They say about having a banksman but having a banksman at one end wouldn't prevent problems at the other. Um, one of the alternatives that was suggested was that they um, put a splay into the lane, into this field, but that means um, cutting into people's properties, and I understand that no planning um, requirements have been requested regarding that. 
So, um, I was, I'm surprised it didn't come up as <coughs> part of the original planning application because I know that East Brent, for example, did query vehicle movements through that part of the village and coming onto Burton Road. Mm. Um, but I guess it's being looked at and highways have said it's not an issue. It, it may have been, or it may just be that the, the contractors are, are doing something they shouldn't be doing. Um, I, I mean, we've made contact, from what we were saying earlier, with the company that are involved with this. It may be worth raising it with them as a concern that obviously they wouldn't want to ruin their reputation with the village by behaving in, in a, in a yeah, way that's not really work, working. Most concerned. And if we copied that to central planning yeah, at the same time, Okay. So that they're aware, because certainly, as, as Malcolm said, when there was discussion about the access before, they were talking about banks and being required to get the traffic off the road as quickly as possible, because it is narrow, right. and it was felt that would be the best way of getting them off the road. Well, if they're going to leave an Arctic on the road just simply blocking it to unload it, it's not, it's not acceptable. So, if we can hardly get down there, yeah. Yeah. another possible delay is that. Um, Although it's a solar farm, it does need power supply to it. So that means that um, there would have to be um, access to mains power from uh, Wick Lane into the property. And also that um, I believe that uh, the drainage board have insisted that the rings are culverted. Again, that would cause a problem with traffic on that road. Mm. Yeah. Usually with the solar farms, how they usually build them up against the grid, and it's, they usually pinch the power off of that on there. Shall I send the notes? I'll just send the notes. Shall I send the notes to the road agent? Saying these are the concerns. Right. Is that what you'd like to do? The nearest um, power, so John was saying, was the nearest power that they can feed into is at the top of Wick Lane or Crooked Lane. And the proposal to go across the fields has been um, negated by John because he refused to allow the cable to go across his land towards Crooked Lane instead of going up Wick Lane and down Burton Road. And then the site there, and I'm sure that that is the grid. No, there's a um, pile of power pile. Yeah, yeah. And then they take the feed it into that. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think at this stage we can only raise a potential objection, or not objection, concern <coughs> over mm -hmm. the, the vehicle movements mm -hmm. associated oh, yeah. with the potential construction, mm -hmm. and anything else at this stage is, is out with our control. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but there's one. If you could do that. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll write, now I've got a contact with him now. I'm going to uh, become yeah, a complete yeah, useless yeah, to the yeah. yeah. <laughs> Random signage in the village. Well, because clearly somebody is already yeah, vandalising yeah. the signs. Peter jumped in the hedge. <laughs> yes. That was Brian's uh, particular yeah. uh, bet noir, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Just yeah. going to do it. John. Random signing of Mid Village, I did bring it up the last meeting, saying that uh, going past the school on the way up to Wells, I noticed a yeah, very sensible sign which says school, 20 mile an hour when lights show. So it was peripherally discussed, and I don't know what were you going to look into that? Right I haven't been asked to yet, but I certainly can do. Well, I think it would be quite a good idea. It seems to be very essential. on the legality, yeah. because I think at the time you said there were some issues that we couldn't instigate a 20 mile an hour limit outside the school for some reason. And I can't remember what. No, I think it was it, it was mentioned that it had been raised a few years ago. Right. And at that stage, they came back and weren't keen. But, that, but again, legislation moves on. So as, well be, as a parish council, do we have the power to... Implement it, no. or is it? We don't. It's county highways that have to do it. Mm. Okay. I think you'll find that only happens in the rural when the schools are out in the sticks. Mm. If it's uh, in an urban area, we've all already got 30 miles. Go, go, to, go to Cheddar, 
and there's 20 mile an hour limit right. within the 30 mile an hour limit by the school. They've all got an eye in the middle of their head, haven't they? But um, in conjunction with the uh, concerns about the uh, school uh, 20 mile an hour sign, I did raise the question as to whether we could put a weight restriction through the village, whether that could be done in conjunction with that. Peter, we've got um, factories at the bottom of the village that require large palletised Vehicle. Which, what do you think, Haley Engineering? Well, no, not Haley. Um, they, they, they come in the dirt driver. They come in the big vehicles in and out all day long. They're big pressure washers. And when you say about vehicles, I don't think there's anything bigger than one of these thinking tractors with a uh, pot load of uh, crushed maize on the back. I mean, you've got to go a long way to beat that weight. Mm -hmm. Because bear in mind, our artic artic the, the, the weight distribution from an articulated lorry these days is, is potentially less than, than, as you say, a tractor with a yeah. trailer because mm -hmm. A, the bigger ones have got three back axles That's right. with possibly double tyres on, so the weight mm -hmm. actual impact on the road is, is considerably <coughs> less. A young lady with a pair of high heels would put four tons of square inch on the half of the elephant. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give up your eye. Oh, yeah. Okay, anyway, we've got numbers. Okay, so matters of report, now can we just clarify for, for all, all present, please? Matters of report are really issues that one would like to see on next month's agenda rather than items for debate. So, Malcolm, anything for the. In fact, we'll. Can we not call it agenda items rather than matters of report? Can be. I mean, I've got down here as a matter of report and agenda items anyway, yeah. actually, so that's how I regard it, actually, as yes. really, or, or just information. It doesn't need any action. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have nothing. John? Mr. Joe, you know I've got one item to raise when the meeting's Yeah, first. We, we, if we could all uh, restrain from running off when we play God Save the Queen, John wants to just say something. Now with the main meeting. Mm -hmm. Colin, anything? No, nothing. Thank you. Yeah, I've got an issue. Can we state what we want to other than issues that need to be on next agenda? Because we were all restricted by the agenda, and I thought that was the time that we had a chance to talk about things well, that. No, these are items that. I understand that, but I mean, I, earlier on this evening, I mentioned the fact that why is we want a temporary issue on planning, and if I couldn't find it, but now I found it, I'm right. reading it through. And perhaps through the chair, Bob could tell me. I, I suspect it's because the uh, the land doesn't belong yeah. to the solar power. But it says um, M blah, 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 to increase the duration of the temporary planning permission related to the, uh, the solar power from 25 years to 30 years. Why is it a temporary planning issue? One of the main reasons is because they're not applying for a change of use of the land. If they went for a complete change of use, then you could potentially yeah. say that's now a brownfield site. Right. A temporary one basically means at the end of it they'll have to yeah, remove everything and it will go back to being green field. So you haven't changed fundamentally that land to being yeah. something else. Right. We have had an application on another one where they did try and make it permanent, several refused it because we were concerned that particularly with the way government's going about allowing anything to be built on brownfield, you could suddenly find huge tracts of what is Greenfield turning into oh. other types of use. So that's why it's temporary. It seems strange that it was temporary, but 30 years. Yeah. 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 There was another maybe I could ask through the, gone through the chair. Yeah. Was the issue I've had, been asked by parishioners, why is the one of the council doing about the cover of houses in the room? <laughs> upset about it. There are a lot of issues other than the current cover of houses, but I would ask as to whether Sagemore have got a right to tell people what colour they can paint their houses? Basically no. If, if you live in a, a listed building, or if you're in a conservation yeah. area, yeah. then several can control the yeah. colour. Yeah. But if they, even if they tried to control it in terms of planning, there'd be nothing stopping the person the day after they've built it, then painting their house a different colour. Yeah. Yeah. So unless it's in those, for those reasons, it's basically up to people to paint their houses whatever they want to. Thank you, I'll go back to that. No more, thank you. Sir, yeah, anything? No, nothing. Oh, okay. Just one thing. Uh, we're missing on Sorry. finance, which is the fact that the council is now covered by the uh, finance compensation guarantees, which it was not 
uh, until recently. So it means that if, for example, the Unity Trust go pop, um, we are covered by the, the financial to the tune of £75,000. Okay. Just a piece of information more than anything else. Any other members of the chairman that it's mince pies? No. No? Oh, yes. We're not. I'm a diabetic. Oh. We have diabetic mince pies. Well, it's a matter of your immunity. The rest of us need mince pies. No alcohol? No alcohol. Gosh, I thought you were a half decent bloke. You have to take that out of the way. Um, Thank I'm you. used to it. And we now have a, Have you turned the camera off? I'm closing the meeting. Yes, thank you. Close the meeting, thank you.